Hello again, my name's John. I'm a retired cook from the northeast of England in the UK and welcome to another one of my bread videos. In this one, as the title suggests, I'll be making a gluten-free sandwich loaf. Now this is something I've never made in my commercial kitchen so I've had to do a little research and I finally found a recipe that works pretty well. So I hope this recipe will help my viewers who have been requesting gluten-free bread. And here's a list of the ingredients needed for this recipe. And as you can see in the ingredients, I'll be using 500 grams of gluten-free bread flour, which is made up of a blend of different gluten-free flours. I'll explain how that works in a moment. I'm using this two pound silicon bread pan for this loaf because this dough is pretty runny and there's less chance of it sticking in this kind of mold. But just to be on the safe side, I'll be giving this a thin coat of vegetable oil and I'll pour off the excess. If you use a metal loaf tin, make sure it's well greased. I recommend greasing your tin with a good coat of lard or a good quality vegetable shortening. Like I said, I bought my flour already made up. If you can't get it, you can make the blend up yourself consisting of 200 grams of rice flour, brown or white, 200 grams of tapioca flour and 100 grams of corn flour. You may know that as corn starch. You'll also need two teaspoons of xanthan gum. My flour already contains it. As there's no gluten in this dough, xanthan gum acts as a thickener, providing the bread with elasticity, structure and it also helps hold in the moisture. Right, now we'll get on with the recipe. Mix together the dry ingredients in the order shown. Whisk in the salt and sugar before adding the yeast. The one I'm using is this instant fast action dried yeast. These 7 gram or 2 teaspoon sachets are ideal for this recipe. Now set the dry ingredients aside for a moment. Now as I've mentioned before, I like to warm up the bowl in certain circumstances and this recipe is no exception. All I do is fill it with hot water then empty and dry it. Ok, mix all of the wet ingredients together apart from the olive oil and give it a good whisk until it develops a foam on the top. If you're wondering about the vinegar, it gives the bread a little lift in the oven and it also acts as a preserver. Right, finally add the lukewarm water and give it a whisk for about a minute. And once it's all foamy on the top, add the dry mix. Now using a spatula, bring it all together until it's a smooth creamy paste. In real time this took me about 3 minutes. I've never tried it but I suppose you could use a stand or an electric hand mixer to do this stage. But as always, I like to do my recipes when possible by hand for those who don't have a machine. And another advantage is, doing it by hand, you don't have to clean your mixer down afterwards. I must admit, when I first tried this recipe, I thought this is the strangest looking dough I've ever seen in my life. And I've made some bread over the years, professionally and at home. It looks and feels more like a sponge cake batter. But, as you'll see, it certainly works. Now the final ingredient to add is the olive oil. According to the recipe, you fold this in very carefully. At first I couldn't understand why you had to do this step, but as you'll see if you try it, the mix becomes less sticky and releases from the side of the bowl and is much easier to handle. If you've used the mixer up to this point, I recommend doing this step by hand as it needs a bit of a gentle touch. Now 
OK, carefully pour the dough into the prepared loaf tin and level it off. Clean off any dribbles that you have or they'll burn in the oven. Now, if you've seen my sandwich or homemade loaf videos, you'll be familiar with this proofing box technique I use on certain breads. All it is is a large plastic storage container that I float in warm water, with a clean damp cloth at the bottom and that will also maintain a moist atmosphere. If you haven't a box like this, you can loosely cover the door with a lightly oiled cling film or plastic wrap. But don't use a tea towel, I guarantee it'll stick to any fabric as it's very soft and delicate when it rises, not like bread dough at all. Right, I'll set the timer for 20 minutes. If you're not using a box like mine, your dough may vary depending on the temperature of your kitchen. But all the tests I've done in this box have been around 20 to 25 minutes. When there's only 10 minutes left on the rise, preheat the oven to 190 Celsius, that's 375 Fahrenheit or gas mark 5. I'm setting mine to 170 Celsius, allowing for the fan assist. OK, once the door reaches the top of the tin, carefully lift it onto a baking tray. Don't let it rise any more than this as it will drip over the edge when it's cooking and firmly stick to a metal loaf tin as you can clearly see in one of my earlier efforts. What a nightmare. So you learn from my mistakes. <laughs> it did come out eventually in three pieces. Unfortunately it was off camera. Now get it into the preheated oven and set the timer for 40 minutes. Right, time's up and it's looking much better this time. And there you go, it's popped straight out of this mould, no bother at all. But not finished cooking yet. To crisp it off and give it a bit more colour, I'll take it out the loaf pan and put it back in the oven for a further 5 minutes. And I'll raise the temperature a little to 200 Celsius, that's 400 Fahrenheit or gas mark 6. I've set mine to 180 degrees, allowing 20 degrees for the fan assist. Right, the time's up and it's looking very good. It feels light and crispy and it's like any other ordinary bread, it smells delicious. So, I'll put it on the cooling rack for half an hour, after which I'll have a look and see what it's like on the inside. Can't wait! Right, here we go. And as you can hear, it has a very crispy crust and it cuts just like ordinary bread. And the inside looks amazing. It has a nice airy close crumb and it's very soft and smells delicious. So, let's have a try with some of my homemade butter and a good helping of that strawberry jam I made in my last video. If you'd like to have a go at making this butter yourself, it's quite easy. I have a video on my channel. I'll leave a link in the description box to it below this video. OK, here we go. And it has a really nice crust and a soft chewy texture and has a lovely flavour. And you don't want much better than that. Well, I sincerely hope this helps some folks with gluten sensitivity, but you don't have to have a gluten intolerance to appreciate this bread. I'll certainly use it in the future, and it was fun to research and make. And another thumbs up for this one. 
Well, thank you again for watching. Please like, share, comment and subscribe by hitting the circle above. If you do subscribe, activate the bell icon next to the subscribe button on my channel page. And by doing that, you'll be automatically notified every time I upload a new video. And in the meantime, here's a few of my other videos you may want to watch. So, until the next time, be safe in the kitchen and bye for now.